you will sing a new song of praise to you for the victory. Let's all pray together. Let's welcome you. Come on, let's welcome the Father here today. Let's make our hearts open to what God wants to do, what the Holy Ghost wants to do as it moves throughout this place, throughout our hearts today. You're here. We're here. God knew you would be here. He knows your name. He knows right where you are. And he has a special plan and purpose for your life. He has a special anointing and outpouring of a spirit that he wants to give to you today. He knew. God knew you would be here. He wants to connect with you. One-on-one with you. He wants to have that deep personal relationship with you. That relationship you were created for. That relationship you were made for. That relationship you crave in your heart and your soul to have. He wants to establish that right now. Today in this place. Just reach out to him today. For he's worthy. He's worthy. church let's just pray a little bit let's just press a little bit and see what god will do there's no telling what he will do in this place today come on church we have the victory today this is god's house this is not the world's house this is not the devil's house this is god's house God reigns supreme in here today, and we praise Him for the victory. Yeah, let's celebrate the victory we have in Jesus today. Yes, you are worthy, Bible says, I will bless the Lord, all my soul. Come on, he didn't say, I feel like blessing the Lord. He said, I will. I don't know why you're looking around. Can you just close your eyes? Lift your hands, your hearts to heaven right now. I will bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
upon Lord. There's nobody like you, Jesus. He's exalted. says that the Lord sent ambushments or a uh, protection against their enemies. I don't know about you, but I've got enemies. Number one, I'm staring at him in the mirror every time I look at myself. Amen? Come on, if I can begin to praise because he's good, I promise you my feelings, come on, they'll get in line. Praise God. You can find your seats. Continue to give God the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we magnify you. Hallelujah. We give you glory in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name.
expectancy ah I told it before but I remember when my daughter and my son-in-law Matthew came to Barbara and I and they said hey we're expecting brother Ray the joy ah, the joy that it brought into us into our hearts but can I tell you what after a few months Kayla didn't have to tell anybody she walked down the street it told it for itself that lady's expecting. Folks, we're expecting here today. We're expecting to see a move of God. We're expecting to see the power of God demonstrated in the house today. God be glorified. Be magnified in this place, we pray. Hallowed be the name of the Lord. Hallowed be the name of the Lord. Father, you are worthy today. Hallelujah. That first song we sang, there was a little refrain that says, for the rest of my life. Folks, you and I are going to do something for the rest of our lives. Something's going to occupy my time, space. What can it be? It can be that I can give God the, pr the praise. All the praise is what the song says. Why? Because we are victorious. Not in myself. Brother Mike, it ain't me. But it is God in me that ca causes me and allows me to be victorious over this day and this hour. What a beautiful privilege we have to come to celebrate the Most High today. To be in the house of God. To lift Him up and to magnify. Father, you are worthy today. God, you are worthy today. You are worthy. I bless your name. I bless your people, oh God. Be exalted in the house today. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. You may find your seats. Welcome to the Pentecostals of Peoria campus. What an opportunity. What a privilege it is to be with my brothers and sisters today. It is good to see our first returning visitor from the uh, travels about. Sister Adina has made it home. We are excited about that. The rest of them are on their way. We would ask that you would continue to pray for them, that God would give them safe travels coming back. Dear Lord, from North Carolina, I pray the hand of God would be upon them. Continue to remember them in your prayers. I don't see Bishop here today. I pray he's doing well. I pray the hand of God be upon Pastor, that he would receive a little, little strength while he's away. I think him and Sister Shelley are going to take a minute and to enjoy themselves. And I pray the blessing, I pray the hand of God would strengthen our pastor for all that he does and all that he gives to the kingdom. I do pray the hand of God be upon him today. I'd ask that our ushers would come today. We'll wait on you for your tithe and your offering. Has God been good? Has God been good? Father, you have been so good to me. What an opportunity we have to give back today to celebrate him in his presence. It's good to see each and every one of you. I pray the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Father, we love you today. God, I bless your name this very day. I thank you for the breath that I breathe and the hope that I have. Thank you for these people, God, each and every family, every home, God, that is here that is represented. I pray the blessing of God be upon them. I pray that our hearts would be prepared today as the word would go forward. That it would bring forth the fruit, God, that you have so desired this day. Now bless this offering, this tithe as such, God, as we give it back unto you. I pray, God, you would return it to us, Lord, in return that we may give it again for the kingdom to continue to go and to grow. In the name of Jesus.
forever he will reign.
somebody shout out. He's, He's mighty. He's mighty. He's awesome. hung up I think it's in me brother Ralph gonna do it all those things that he said there it's in him I become fulfilled in him when I understand that I become holy I become great I become everything that God would have and want for me to be today hallelujah hallelujah God it is in you that we live that we move and we have our being help us to understand that help us to realize that today almighty God hallelujah God bless you. You may be seated. Oh 
Father, we magnify you. Oh, hallelujah. Ha. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you are worthy today. God, you are worthy today. Hallelujah. 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 And thou shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? For all those things, for everything that was said today, it's in him truly that we do live, that we move and have our being. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an opportunity. Oh, God, we bless you today. Hallelujah. Everybody ready to hear the word of the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 We had a wonderful time this morning in Pekin. We had a young man receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think as I said there, I don't know what needs you have today. But the Bible said, he shall supply all my need according to his riches. Folks, it's from God. It is in him. So therefore, I can trust and have confidence today. Brother Beardsley was with us last night, and we had an incredible move. And I sense the residue as such that is in this house. Uh, I'm going to bring the man of God to the pulpit. Brother Beardsley, I want to say thank you for the kindness that you've shown my wife and I. Had an opportunity to spend a little time with him, an incredible man. And uh, let's hear what, the Lord of the, hear what the word of the Lord would have to say to us today. Hallelujah. Let's give that to the Lord right now. We're in the overflow right now. feel what I feel, you're not as drunk as you're supposed to be. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost fell on them on the day of Pentecost, they perceived them to be drunk. You ever been around a drunk before? It's hard to communicate with them. They speak a language you don't even understand. I feel like some of us are as drunk as we're supposed to be. I believe this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the last days he's going to pour out his spirit. Not just on 120, but upon all flesh. From the front to the back. There's an anointing in this place right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't explain. This is a dangerous place to be right now. Amen. Because if you were here last night, you know what I'm talking about. That's that's the norm for God. But there was an atmosphere. There was just it was so heavy, and it's still here. And I, you know, use the word remnants. But I, I feel like somebody's removed the ashes of that. We've got something fresh here right now. I'm looking for the miraculous to happen. It's an anticipation in my spirit that I feel. Hallelujah. I believe his name's Taylor. Got the Holy Ghost today. You got a new brother. And those that are sitting next to him, I don't remember their names, but uh, they were they didn't get the Holy Ghost they're as close as you can get their hair is singed I, I want to explain to them too a lot of times we, we, we mistake and we think that we're going to speak in tongues like somebody that's around the way one person speaks in tongues doesn't mean that's going to be the way you speak in tongues so uh, the stammering lips and uh, uh, the young man that's sitting next to Taylor he, I'm speaking to him he would 
he forced himself to speak English, if I can say it that way, because God was taken over and in between. So I believe God's going to confirm it in them today. And I want to say this to you. You're probably not going to just speak fluently in tongues. That some people do, some don't. When a baby's born, they don't come out and say, hey, Dad, what's up? We think they talk when they go, Ugh. he said my name. No, he didn't. <laughs> but you're a babe in Christ. You're, you're a newborn. So it's just God showing people around you because I know you feel the Holy Ghost. It was all over you. You had stammering lips and I mean, it was just, it's amazing. So we want God to confirm today that the other two have received the Holy Ghost. And we want, we want Taylor to get full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I've come to fight. I did. I come to fight. I'm, look, I, I, I'm not looking for it. It's, it was here when I got here, but I've come to fight. You know, a mom, if somebody picks on their children, I, I promise you there's a fight in them you didn't know that they had. They get monkey strength. I remember I accidentally hit some lady in the, the grocery store, you know, on the shin or the heel with that cart. Feels like you can lose the Holy Ghost. I hit somebody like that, and, and this lady come at me sideways like, you better watch it. My mom, my mom went at her straight forward. Like, you, you don't talk to my baby that way. She was balled up, ready to fight. Amen. There's a difference between watching the fight and being in a fight. I didn't say I'm ready for a fight. I said I come to fight. Amen. I come to fight. I come to fight for your faith. I come to fight for unity. I come to fight for your children. I come to fight for your future. I come to fight right now. I come to fight against hell. I come to fight against every word that's spoken against your character in the name of Jesus. I come to fight a good fight. Hallelujah. Directing your attention to Jude 1 and 1. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to pull it up quick. I want to move quickly because I'm expecting God to do something great in this place. Jude 1 and 1. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Somebody say multiplied. Let peace and love. It starts with mercy. Mercy unto you and peace and love. Let it be multiplied, beloved. When I gave all diligence to you, this is Paul speaking, to write unto you of the common salvation. It's a salvation that you all are aware of. You know about this salvation. It's become just common to you. It's, it's, it's known. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend or fight. Let me put that in there. That you should earnestly fight for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men that crept in unawares who were before of an old ordained of this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you into remembrance, though you, you once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, a war destroyed them that believed not. Three things that I really want to hone in on right now is... I, want, I come to fight for your, your unity, for your faith, and your praise. If we can get that together, everything else is going to come to pass. I believe that. I give high honor to your pastor, the bishop. Uh, I, I, take, I don't, do not take it lightly that he would allow me to speak here with him in his absence. Uh, I feel that there, there's a trust there, and I don't want to uh, make sure that I stay under that umbrella. And, but I, I, I give a high honor to all the ministry and the, the, the daughter work, that's everything that's happened here, and to you. Amen. Thank you so much. I, I just want to say personally, for those that are sacrificing to go over and help with the daughter work, um, thank you so much for your sacrifice. I, I've done this, what you do, and it's, it's taxing on you physically. Cash in on that. In God, cash in on that. 
That's sacrifice that you can cash in on. And what I'm saying is let, let God bless you. Amen. So thank you. And thank you, church, for, for being able to stretch yourself to a place to allow growth to happen. Everybody loves newborns. Amen. Everybody wants to hold the baby. Some people, you just don't want them holding your baby, though. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. Thank you for your precious presence that we feel in this place. God, we're unworthy of your glory and your honor. This presence that you have put on us in the last 24 hours, God, I'm so thankful for it. But knowing it has purpose beyond just filling us up. Lord, I pray that this word will go forth for your kingdom's sake and, and help others. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for what you're doing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. Turn to your neighbor tell him I come to fight today. Has anybody ever been in a fight, a, a real fight, a physical fight? It's nice when you're winning. I like a fight when I'm winning. You get a really good feeling when you're winning. But when you're losing, it's one of the worst feelings you can ever have. I remember one time on a playground, I, I cut in front of a young man. And he was one of those kids, you know, rough kid. And he said, you cut in front of me. I said, yeah, what about it? I don't know where I got this, this anger. Or something. But I pushed him. Well, he put, I, my push was not enough to de detour him from his punch. That guy punched me in the mouth, knocked my tooth out. I've got blood filling up in my mouth, and I can feel a tooth like, uh-oh. But I still had to look like I was. <laughs> so I'm like, pushed him again. But then I went to the bathroom and cried myself and my tooth out of my head. <laughs> Amen. We got, we got a generation now. They think they know how to fight because they watch somebody else fight. Man, they, they don't, it's like, you know, Mike Tyson was a, a bad dude. He had power. You all have power. But when an enemy comes and attacks you, it's just like Mike Tyson said, man, I, I hate my life. I, I'm one of the most miserable people. I, I, I'm miserable. And it all happens because he knows how to fight, but he, he doesn't know how to defend himself. He doesn't know how to take a punch. He doesn't know how to, he, 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 he. Whenever he got knocked down, from that moment on, if you look at his, his, his life, it just kept spiraling down. It's one thing to be able to punch. It's another to be able to take a punch. To be able to, it's one thing to know that we can hit the enemy, but when the enemy hits back, we become very reclusive. We, you know, I, I'm just not going to, you know I mean? People are sitting even here right now and you, your life has become just reclusive in your, in your worship and your praise because you know like, well, I'm just going to protect myself and, and you're just huddling up and letting, letting life just punch you. Well, I've got my, I've, I've got my face covered and then I hit my face, but you got bruises, your bruised fruit. You ever see somebody go to the, to the grocery store? My mom and them did, what are you doing? They're pushing on the fruit. Want to make sure it ain't bruised. I don't want bruised fruit. Well, you become bruised fruit and bruised fruit because of your wounds and your hurts. You, you become reclusive and you, 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 just, you just huddle in a corner and you don't want to fight anymore because of life. That's part of it. This is why Paul tells Timothy, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. It goes hand in hand. I still believe, even though I'm getting knocked down, he even gets beside himself at a place and says, man, you know what I've been through? You're bringing your problems. Stop it. Just hold on a minute. Let me tell you what I've been through. But none of these things shall separate me from the love of God. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ which strengthened me. What I'm trying to tell you is you still got power even though you've been hit. Even though life has brought you a curve and, and you seem to be striking out all the time. You still got a power in you. You just got to get up and fight back. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God that he, he, he's mighty in power. Amen. Knowing that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. I've come to remind some brothers and sisters today, be strong in the Lord. I said be strong in the Lord. Get confidence back. 
I know you're confident in salvation, but you got to be confident in the strength of this salvation. You got to understand that there's enough power in this place. Even in your weakness, he says, God is strong. Even when you're down, there's still strength in the house. He comes running. Grace and mercy will come running to you. Hallelujah. It is a place of refuge. Hallelujah. You can't just make this a place of not being able to be knocked down. What kind of fight is that if you're never knocked down? They say a good fight is when people are each... I mean, everybody's swinging. People in the crowd swinging. Amen. I, I, I can remember years ago, you know, you, you know, these people, they come out and you'll watch Bruce Lee or something. This is before Christ, so don't judge me. But you watch Bruce Lee, and then you're out in the, then you're out in the yard like, ooh. Knowing you're about to get hurt. Nobody even has to hit you and you're going to get hurt. <laughs> You're doing kicks that you can't do. Your mind's trying to do stuff that your body will not do. (laughs) You're landing on your head. You ever had some nunchucks? It ain't as easy as it looks. (laughs) I beat myself up. (laughs) Like, you want some of this? Like, you're doing enough. You don't, I don't have to do it. I just watch you. You know how many people are beating themselves up here today? The enemy doesn't have to come near you anymore. You just saying, oh, before you get here, let me talk into my life. I'm a, I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm a nothing. I'm never going to amount to anything because somebody else told you that and you, you've lost your fight. I come to fight for your faith today. I come to tell you that you are more than a cop. There's a champion in you. There's a God that is for you. I didn't come to wake up the David in you or a Goliath in you. I come to wake up the God in you. A God that sits high, but he looks low enough. He says, even if you make your own bed in hell, I'm always there. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'll be there until the end. Somebody go, it's not over if you're able to do that. It's not the end. Stop putting a period to your life. It's dot, 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 dot to be continued. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord. Putting on the the whole armor of God. And the power of his might. That you may. You may. Somebody say may. You might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not. Amen. We wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Quit looking at your neighbor and blaming it on them. You got an adversary that's in between you. You got somebody else that's duped you, tried to make you feel like that's the enemy. That's not the enemy. Hallelujah. But you got an adversary that's agging you on. I can remember being, I got to share this, but don't tell Brother Anthony Bailey, but Rob Bailey, you know him? Yeah, okay. I'll just say that. I remember Anthony Bailey was young and used to wear gloves when he played the drums because his hands were sweaty all the time. He was a phenomenal drummer. But one of the kids at a rally was making fun of him because he's, you know, wearing white gloves. Oh, look at that wannabe Michael Jackson. Too soon, sorry. (laughs) That just came out of nowhere. But he said, there's a kid making fun of him. He's a big kid. I'll jump in, but I can't jump in because I'm bigger than him. I need you to start the fight. Like, I'm looking up at the guy that he wants me to fight. He said, take your skateboard and run into him. I did it. He said, I'll be there. I'll step in. You have to know Rob. I did my part. <laughs> I knocked the guy. He got up. He kept getting up. I'm looking up at him. He says, you want some of this? I'm looking at Rob like, he Rob's like, fight! Luckily, my my brother-in-law stepped in. I was about to get knocked out. Amen. There's some fights that we're fighting that we don't need to fight. You've got to quit poking bears. I'm telling the truth. There's the same things that we're fighting against that you're never going to win. You don't have the power.
power to win. You got to put God in the ring. You want to know how to win every time? Get out of the ring. Quit trying to fight those things. Quit trying to fight addictions on your own. Amen. You don't have the power to do that. It's called an addiction for a reason. It's addictive. Your body craves it. I remember I broke my wrist. And I don't know why I'm telling this, but I'm going to tell it. But I broke my wrist and I sprained my ankle playing basketball. I'm really talented. And they put me on Vicodin. It'll mess with you. My body started creating pains when I tried to get off of it. I took a bottle and a half at one time. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm joking. Seriously. <laughs> I went through a bottle and a half like it was prescribed. And by the time I got to the half a bottle, I was like, all right, now I'm good. I can, you know, I I don't have the pain. And I got off it, and all of a sudden my body was screaming, you need this. You need this. I could feel tinglings going through my body. And when I take it, it would go away. And I think it was God showing me, hey, addiction's real, son. You can get up and preach about deliverance all you want, but until they give it to me, they can't get rid of it on their own. You're fighting fights that you don't have to fight today. I'm telling you, you give it to God. God will take care of some things. I'm just trying to get your faith to a place that you can put it in God's hands. Things are holding people captive because you've lost your fight. You've lost your faith. Did you understand faith and, and fight goes together, contending and faith? If you got faith, you, you've got to fight back. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against each other, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness. In what? We want them to be in low places, but they're ruling spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil in the evil day and have done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all take the shield of faith whereof you, sh- you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked I believe that God has given to all it's scriptural a measure and a means of fight a measure of faith and the means to be able to fight back You just got to settle in your mind that this is worth fighting for. I ask some of you parents, are your children worth fighting for? Hallelujah. Is there a generation that you feel is lost? Are they worth fighting? Is one soul worth fighting for? The enemy knows if he can attack our belief system, then he has us right where he wants us. The way he attacks our faith is by getting us caught up, catch it, and doing the work of the Lord. There's, it's one thing to do the work of the Lord. It's another to do the work for the Lord. We're doing the work of the Lord. He doesn't need us. Uh, amen. Serving God out of duty and not desire. Then you lose your relationship with God. We can become so busy doing God's work with churches and programs and growth numerically and growth financially that our personal relationship with God becomes a distant memory. I wouldn't trade anything for the presence of God we felt last night. And anybody that was there, it was transformational for them. There was a transforming power in that place last night. It wasn't anything that was said. It was just the atmosphere that was created because faith rose. You have, you have to have a personal relationship with God. It's great we can come together and have a corporate relationship. This is great. This is easy. Nobody's going to mess with us when we're going this deep. But when you've got a giant and you're by yourself, you, it becomes personal. Hey, man, i got a bunch of friends at church on Sunday. Meet me on Sunday. No. They're waiting for your Monday. <laughs> you don't get road rage in here. 
you get aisle rage, I'm sure. Especially <laughs> That's my seat. <laughs> You go by and do a kick by. <laughs> oh, I was in the Lord. <laughs> if he isn't a very present help in your trouble, then your relationship may be tainted. There is a difference between, hear this, your pastoral relationship with God and your personal relationship with God. Man, it's great to have a pastoral relationship where he's a watchman, but he's just the watchman. He's not your God. He's telling you, as Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. You've got to get your own fight. He doesn't go to your job. Your pastor's not there. There's times that you may try to call him, and he may be on the phone with somebody else. What do you do then? You've got to get a fight in you. You've got to start speaking the name of Jesus. You have the power. Hallelujah. If your relationship is just pastoral and not personal, you will eventually start serving God out of duty and not desire. I got to go to church. We have to go to prayer meeting. If I want to sing in the choir, I've got to go to prayer meeting. Oh, I hate being there. You would have loved being here last night. I wouldn't trade, I, I'm telling you, I wouldn't trade that for anything. I'm still in the overflow. I feel drunk in the spirit right now. I, I, feel, I feel dangerous because of it. Because I feel like I can, I can speak to mountains right now. Hallelujah. We're in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's because of a personal relationship. Hallelujah. I don't know how it works for you. I really don't. Or how you do you. Spiritually. But if, if I want joy, if I want to be able to speak and preach and pr profess and confess things, I have to find, I have to have a relationship with Jesus. If I'm going to preach to you today and be effective, not popular, not just preach a good message, but be effective, I need to have touched the throne before I get here. Hallelujah. It's bad when we come to church and our Sundays and our altars are for the saints to get revived. You should have done that on Saturday. Hallelujah. Amen. I got news for you. You're not going to make it through fiery furnaces if you haven't praised him before it. You're not going to make it to, you're going to stay behind the rocks with everybody else whenever David's in the, on the field. It wasn't God's purpose. It wasn't God saying, oh, nobody else can do it. Yeah, everybody could have done it. They just lost their faith. And they lost their faith. They lost their fight. And all of a sudden, the giant's bigger, too big for them to conquer. Amen. If I want to have his power, he has to be present. I'm not talented enough. I need Jesus. I have to have Jesus present. I've come to fight for your faith. i come to connect my faith to yours. Where two or three are gathered together, God is there in the midst. I believe we can speak to some cancer in this place. We can speak to diabetes in this place. We can speak to oppression in this place. Hallelujah. I don't care what it is. I feel like there's enough faith in the house that we can fight a good fight tonight. We can be overcomers today. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of it. Not in the name of cancer. We know how to call out our problems. We have trouble calling out the name of Jesus. Victory has a name. <laughs> Healing has a name. What a name that's above every name. Above your oppression, Jesus. Hallelujah. Above, above every problem you brought in here, it's Jesus. Hallelujah. You attach your faith to Jesus. And I got news for you. Put Jesus in the ring with your depression. Put Jesus in the ring with your addiction. And you just stand on the sidelines and you be a good cheerleader. Come on, Jesus. You can do it. Hallelujah. If you believe that, somebody shout yes. How 
does the enemy attack our faith? Through our fleshly desires and appetites. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you get. God spoke to me about you when you was over here. I don't know what you've gone through. But God has given peace for given and everything's good in your life. But you're not walking into a new. You're just in a holding pattern. God says, I got new for you. I don't just forgive. I push you into your destiny. And everything in your past has purpose. So you need to start looking for new. Hallelujah. You got to fight for your future. Your past is dead. So we, 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 old things are passed away. All things become new. Hallelujah. That's not just for the new saint. That's for, that's for the old saint. Amen. He renews your mind daily. daily. Thank God. Daily. Hallelujah. But through our fleshly desires and appetites, no matter how much Jesus you get, your flesh is going to be wanting. This is why Paul said, I die daily. That doesn't mean he was sinning all the time. He just wanted to make sure that his focus was right. You don't go into a fight. Just That was one of Mike Tyson's problems. He said, I didn't train properly. I didn't focus on it. I had other things going on. I started just thinking of other things. you got to be focused on what you're, what you're coming against. you got an enemy against you. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who's this guy in the ring? All right. Who's he? Who's she? If you don't come with the name of Jesus, you better get out of the ring. You better have, some, you better have a white towel around. Let somebody throw that really quick. Hallelujah. When I get spiritual, my flesh will argue with me. We have conversations. Just me, myself, and I. We do. We talk to each other. I ask questions and I answer back. I say, man, I'm hungry. My stomach says, yes, you are. (laughs) I will ask myself. And there's times I will grumble back at myself and murmur and complain. I ask you, this is, these are things that I ask myself. How could a Krispy Kreme donut taste so good and be so bad for you? Somebody's lying. <laughs> the doctor tell you, oh, you got you to stop eating Krispy Kremes. Man, I'll beat through my eighth one. And I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> what does that doctor know? I'm, st- I'm still standing. Break him on. He lied. <laughs> I will just inhale eight of them. Whenever it says fresh. I'll... Look and see if anybody's around. Sucking in your stomach. Yeah. Going to a party. Yeah. <laughs> What does that doctor know? And by the time I get there, to that dozen and a dozen and a half, if this is so wrong, then I don't want to be right. (laughs) I start believing me and my belly over what the doctor says. I start believing me and my belly over my pant size when my pants start getting stretch marks. I still say it's good. He's just enlarging my territory. Thank God for spandex and warm ups and sweatpants. And, and you can go, you can go to Kohl's and they got pants now. They have a stretch deal. <laughs> On both sides. I'm wearing a pair right now. <laughs> Ooh, it's hot in here. I'll believe me and my belly over me not being able to climb the stairs. And the only thing moving in my life, it's not exercise, it's my waistline. The only thing I have room for in my life is more donuts. Hallelujah. I know that's a simple thing, but you can tell it's true out here. Some of you, you're like, you got the the donut shame. You're like... 
It's Sundays. It's donut day. <laughs> hey, Adam, I don't want you to be alone. Uh, so from Adam's flesh, not from God's image or God's, God's creation, but from what God created, then it's secondary. But from Adam's flesh was Eve formed. And from my, hear me, from my understanding, when God would come down in the cool of the day, he would have a personal relationship, the Bible says, with Adam. Uh, we're about to get serious for a moment. I haven't found anywhere where Eve was in the conversation when it was a direct relationship with God. And the serpent knew who to go to. He chose wisely. He knew who was vulnerable. And somebody that was vulnerable, not just for him to speak into their life, but for them, for them to speak into Adam's life. Somebody that had fl- something that came out of his flesh. Somebody, something that he loved. You know, there's, there's parents that will leave church because their kids are offended. I, 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 I was at a church far from here. And, and the, there was a parent that was just telling... Uh, was telling the pastor that they were thinking about going somewhere else because their kids were offended. They, they weren't treated right in the youth group. And their kids have influence enough. And we're talking sixth, seventh graders, not adults. Well, I'm just worried about little Susie. You need to learn, you need to tell Susie, you need to learn how to fight. If somebody's making fun of you, you know. Learn to fight. Defend yourself. I'm not saying get physically. Well, kind of am, but I, I'll give you an example. My sister came home. I remember this. I was real young, but my sister came home, and some girl was beating her up on the, and she went home and told my dad, like, look at she. And the other sisters that were with, I have four sisters, like, yeah, she got beat up. Look at her. And your dad, my dad said, you're going to have to learn to fight. He said, you get back out there and you whoop that girl or I'll whoop you. (laughs) She looked at him and thought, she don't look that big now. (laughs) She went out there and tore that girl up. (laughs) Hallelujah. If you don't defeat the devil in your house, you don't learn to fight the, if you don't learn to fight, fight temptation and Krispy Kremes in your house, Amen. Stop bringing those home. <laughs> Not Krispy Kremes, but you know. Hopefully you're getting this. <laughs> you got to stop bringing, you got to stop letting influence come into your, your children's. If they see you defeated. They don't see you as an overcomer. Well, we're just sitting here because, you know, I'm just making, we got to go to church because won't we have a time we get over here? No, we want to have church today. Your kids need to see Jesus today. They're in a fight right now. Stop making it a love place and stop making it a social status. Make it a place of refuge. Make it a battleship. You're an overcomer in this place. You got to fight back. I did it last night. About a third, not even a third of you came and got the mic when I said, did you have a ministry? But it isn't fulfilled yet. Was there a dream or a vision that God gave you? And there's a whole bunch of you that stood up. But you didn't have a fight in your voice. I'm not knocking you. That's God giving you revelation. Get your voice back. Some of you just, the roar, and I probably talked about that before. But the roar is enough for you. That strikes fear in you. Satan has a roaring line. His roar is enough to make you become reclusive. And I understand that. I've been to the zoo. And I've had a lion roar at me because I was messing with the cage. And it's scary. It'll, it'll make you freeze up. And you're like, ah, look at the you ain't can't get me. And when it roars, you're going, yes, it can. There's fear in it. It scares you. But you've got to learn to fight. I know you have a past. And I know there's things behind you, but you got a destiny still. You got to get out of the cave, David. You got to get to a place of you got to get back. To, you got to get some praise back in your in your vocabulary. You got to get your voice back. I found it amazing. I heard a saxophone today in church. I'm like, it's not on the platform. Where's that coming from? And there's a 
gentleman down here that's playing the saxophone. I'm not advocating everybody bring your instrument. But even if you're not on a platform, you still have a song to sing. Even though you may be down, if you've got a song, you can come up again. You, you remember, I, I preached here about palms and willows. you got to learn to give God praise even when it seems like you don't have much to give him. When you don't even have an offering, you still come up and do an airdrop. By faith, I'll have something to put tomorrow. Amen. Because I'm, I'm fighting a good fight of faith. I'm keeping faith to believe that God's able. Amen. you got to speak some things into existence in your life. Let me get back to this. So the serpent asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit of, from any of the trees in the garden? She says, well, of course we may eat from the trees in the garden. The woman replied, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle. Right in the middle. It's like Krispy Kremes. They don't put it out on a country road. They put it where you shop for everything else. You have to go buy the sign." Coming out of the drive-thru, like, you ever, you ever just, you have, <laughs> this is a road trip thing. You know, you have snacks because you're doing a long trip, and, and, and you're like, okay, that's enough of that. That's too fattening, so. And you'll just be driving, and you'll just, your mind, your, your, your body will just automatically, and you'll find yourself, what am I doing? <laughs> I've done that like six times. It feels like in a 10-minute period. <laughs> In 10 minutes, I'm, my, I, it's just, oh, i got to have this. He puts it right in the middle. And here's somebody that doesn't have a personal relationship with God. And he comes to her, and he spins truth. He gives halves truths. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not able to eat. I find it disturbing that God, he gave access to it. And, was, and, and they, when they ate it, it was what? It was good to eat. That's what they said. It, it was good. Matter of fact, when she took it, she's like, it's like me with Krispy Kremes. See, I didn't die. Oh, but you're numb, your days are numbered now. You, you, you're dying. You don't even know it. You realize when they tell you, you know, I, I, scales are of the devil. <laughs> hey, man, I go to the doctor, and the first thing they say is, I said, I, I promise, I say this. God's anointed said, well, I'll get on it, but you don't tell me the number. I look away. Are you done? <laughs> I'm telling the truth. I don't, I, I'm in denial. I'm good. I didn't see it. <laughs> My feet says, no, you're not. They talk to me too. But right in the center of the garden, he puts a, a Krispy Kreme shop with the neon hot now light flashing. It's always there. God says you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. He says you won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened up as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced she believed. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. And then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. I submit to you today, we are only as strong as those that are around us. If you're, really, if you're the only one in your household that has a personal relationship with God. There is danger lingering. I'm going to say this to even ministry. If you're called to ministry and your wife doesn't hear it, or vice versa, if your wife's called and you're not, and you didn't hear it, you're just following along, there is a danger. You need to make sure that your spouse or whoever else is connected to you, that they hear the voice of God too. Hallelujah. If God spoke to me, anytime I make a decision, I say, God, if it's true, you're going to have to tell my wife. Because I know I ain't going anywhere without her. Because that's, that's my weakness. That's, that's wherever she has influence. That's my influence. 
She can influence me. You can mess with me and call me stuff all day, but you talk about my wife, we're going to fight. We're going to knuckle up, not even in the parking lot. It's going to be in the house of God. You understand what I'm saying? Your family, you'll fight for your family. We'll fight for our family when somebody says something, but why aren't you fighting a devil that's coming against them? If somebody came verbally and started, uh, the strong men of the house will get up, our strong woman. In some houses, it's the women. <laughs> they'll get up and they'll make sure that they defend. Your, your personal relationship isn't enough. You need to ha- make sure everybody has a relationship. Okay. I don't want to go long because I feel like God's going to do something quick. We are susceptible to partake of what they desire. I've come to fight for your family and your future today. It's time to get a fight in us. I heard a message not too long ago about a, a, somebody was, and I, I've preached it before, but how Abraham prayed and because of his prayers helped deliver his nephew out of Sodom. You've, you've heard it, I'm sure. And that's a great story and that's a great uh, testimony of it. And I, we, I thank God that prayer works. But God spoke to me in the middle of that message and said, There's prayers that we're having to pray that we don't even have to pray. You understand that Lot and Abraham's relationship was perfect. There was no problems. They were both blessed beyond measure. It was the people that were connected to them that had the problem. And because they had problem, they couldn't be together. And so Abraham, not he's being a gentleman and so is Lot. They're still cordial. But the things that are connected to them was toxic. So Abraham tells Lot, says, you pick wherever you want. And he says, I'll just wait, whatever you pick. He doesn't say, I'll pick. He said, I'll wait and see what God tells me to do. That's what he says. You're going to let your nephew go, and you're going to pray prayers. If you only, you're going to lose your sister, you're going to lose your niece. You're going to lose family. You're, you're, Lot's delivered out of Sodom, but he's in the mountains and all the stuff that we won't even go into because of time that he has to go through because you let Lot go without hearing the voice of God. It may have been in the best interest for Lot to go, but you should have said, hey, how about me and you go and let's go hear what God has to say for both of us. Let, let, let's let God talk to both. Anybody would have picked where Lot was going if he was looking through the physical eye. Because it looked good. It was, it was right to the eye. He was going to prosper. But here Abraham is, is grieving. My God, and we celebrate it. God says, no, don't let them go. Got a young man right now that I was just talking to a minister. His son's 18, 19 years old. Says, We're, I'm leaving. He says, I said, you better fight for that kid. Don't just let him go. You say, okay, if you respect me as your daddy, let's go to an altar. And I'm okay with you going. I understand you're at the age you can go. But let's make sure it's the right place you're going. I understand you want to prove you're a man and you're a woman. But you better make sure you hear the voice of God. I've come to fight. I've come to fight for some things in this place. I know we're at a down right now where you're not just feeling inspired, but you're getting informed right now. There's decisions that we make that it detours us from our destiny. And because of that, we look at it and say, this is just the way life gets. No, roaming in the mountains wasn't the will of God. Do you not remember how blessed you were, Lot? Whenever you was following the way of God. And it wasn't Abraham. It was the God of Abraham. Hallelujah. It's natural to leave and to cleave. To, to go somewhere else and get, get connected. But you've got to make sure. That it's still. You're hearing the voice of God. I don't know who that's for, but I promise you, you need to hear what I'm saying to you right now. It's of importance. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Hallelujah. I'm 
I'm closing with this. You see, Eve was deceived because she didn't have a personal relationship with God. So the serpent was able to come in the form of a peace and information, understanding. But we find Paul at a place where he's shipwrecked. He's, he's suffering hypothermia. You remember the story? He tells the people, stay with the ship. It's going to be all right. Then it breaks apart and everybody's floating and almost dying. But they're still alive. They don't realize it was still the ship. But he, he floats to, and he's so cold, and no doubt he's, he's getting hypothermia. And he, grab, he grabs some sticks. He has them in his hands. He has the snake, and he doesn't even know it. Because it's able to, but when it gets close to the fire, it reveals its tact, its intent. The Bible says when he, he gets it to the fire, and it feels the fire. I don't know if you get it or not. When it feels the Holy Ghost, it reveals its intent. Eve was deceived. But Paul has a personal relationship with God. And Satan tells Eve, says, oh, you won't die. She said, we're not dying. Paul, the viper comes out, the snake comes out, and it reveals its intent. It strikes him. It's a poisonous snake. And everybody around him says, he's going to die today. Have one church member helping him. Like, oh, watch him. He's dying. He ain't nothing but the devil right now. Did you see that devil attacked him? Because he's he's wrong. And Paul just don't have any cheerleaders. I don't have any choir. He just shakes it off. He just shakes it off in the fire that revealed it. He says, I don't, I won't die today because I've heard from God. Ain't nobody fooling me. You can say what you want back there, but I shall live today because God told me I have a destiny. I have a place I'm supposed to be, and I'm not there yet. You got dreams and vision that are here. Hey, I got news for you. If your dream is still alive, that means the dreamer's still alive. So if the dreamer's alive, so is the dream. It's vice versa. It's still going to come to pass. You just got to make sure that you're in the place that you can Reap the benefit of it. I want to be part of the dream. I don't want somebody else to fulfill it. There's revelation here. God wants to reveal some things. You got to get close to the fire. I was in a church, and I'm done here. I was in a church recently, and you know, they were this lady, she's got, I'm blessed on the back of her truck. Well, that's all she's got left is the truck. Because and she's, she was in her 60s, I believe. This just happened. And she's in the same hotel I'm in. I'm there because I'm preaching. I'm just there for the two weeks. She's there because she has no home now because everything in her house burned up. The only thing she had was her clothes and her dog. That's the only thing that got out. And when you got 60-something years of all your possessions and they're just gone. And I asked her, I said, because the guy that dropped me off, he says, yeah, that lady, she's staying here in the hotel because she has no home. I went up to her and said, how you doing? She says, I'm blessed. And then I went to church on Sunday. And they were, they didn't, they didn't know. But they were singing a fire song. And I'm like, too soon. She's there. Let the fire fall. It did. It already fell. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, that's the problem. He said, what happens, Jason, when the fire falls? It burns up all your possessions. It burns up everything in your life. We want a Holy Ghost fire to fall in this place today. I want it to burn up some addictions. It's, it's one thing to have the Holy Ghost, but when you have the Holy Ghost and fire, if we can get the fire, that's what I'm praying today, that the fire will fall in this place. There's some things that God has spoken specifically to some people that are here today, that God is wanting to manifest himself and do a work, but you've got to get a fight in your spirit. You've got to get to the place say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him message is mediocre I know it is it's foolishness but anointing is powerful and it's pure 
It's required that we give a message. I may have went a little too long today, but it's required that we give the message. Now the movement has to happen. This is the most important part of this service. We love and we get content with feeling the atmosphere. You stood during praise and worship. That sacrifice to get God here. Now that he's here, let the fire fall. Hallelujah. If you are here, and I know there's a couple that were brave enough, and I know this is a bigger church, and you were brave enough to come up to the altar. I believe God's going to complete the work in you today. If you're here and you want the Holy Ghost, you've never spoken tongues, or you're not for sure, I want you, I invite you to the front right now. I invite you to come forward if you want the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Just wherever you feel comfortable up here. Hallelujah. They made it easy for you. Thank you so much for responding. I want some ministry team to get ready. I want you to line up in front here. If you're part of the ministry team, male or female, we need some, we need some workers right now. If you're here and you have the Holy Ghost, but you don't feel like you have fresh fire, you need to fight for it today. I want you to move quickly and come to the front. If you want more from God, if you're, if you're feeling like you just don't have everything that you need, I invite you to the front right now. There's fresh fire that's going to fall on you today. We're going to sing and we're going to worship. I don't want you telling your problems. I just want you worshiping. And I invite everybody to come up and let's fill this altar. Let's move, let's move forward a little bit here. Somebody find somebody. This young lady here, I believe, said she wants the Holy Ghost. Need somebody that knows how to pray to get in front of her. Let's pray right now. We're going to all go into a time of repentance. We're just going to seek the face of God right now, and the fire is going to fall on this place. Hallelujah, as we sing. Come on, that's it. Lift your voices. Come on, don't just watch people. Let's get into an atmosphere. Break every chain to break every chain to break every chain break every chain there is power I just built your faith the name now you need to repent everybody if you want fresh fire if you want the Holy Ghost the Bible says repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ come on it's you need to fight for your future in the name of Jesus, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power. There is power. Come on, that's it. Come on, church. Lift your praise before the Lord. Jesus, there is power. power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain to break every come on that's chain, it break in the name of chain, Jesus break every chain there is power there is power Right. 
Jesus name. To Jesus name. Jesus name. Break every Hallelujah. Chain. Break every chain. In the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. In the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Come on, break somebody let your praise rise. Right. Break every in chain. Jesus name. Power in your praise. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Jesus, they come on. Break every chain. We cry out to you to break every chain. Break In Jesus' every chain. name. Oh, come on, somebody come worship. On break every you cut break that every every chain. Chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. You ain't gonna die. As we lift you up. Oh. As we lift you up. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every Loser chain. Right now, Jesus break every chain. Come on, lift your praise, lift your praise, lift your praise, lift your praise. Come on, Jesus, come on, somebody. Break every chain, break every chain. Oh, yes, break every chain. Oh, I can't look the power in the name. Oh, Lord, power in the name. Jesus, break every chain. There is power. In the name Jesus. of Jesus, we oh, call on you. Come on, that's it. Don't stop your praise. Chain. God's still doing break something. Break every chain. Break every chain. Come on, we need liberty break in this place. Chain. Break every chain. We need to create an atmosphere. We call on your name. I curse every distraction. Break every chain. In Jesus' name. Break every chain. In the name chain. of Jesus. Break every chain. As we praise. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising up. Jesus. There's an army rising up. Hallelujah. There's an army rising up. Jesus. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Don't stop praising him. We need an atmosphere shift in this place right now. We need to just let the Holy Ghost minister. Some people are trying to get the Holy Ghost, but they got problems that God's need to deal with in their life. We need to work on that for just a moment. We need God to, to give revelation. We need some weights lifted off some people. The Bible says through repentance you'll receive the Holy Ghost. But some people can't even think about repenting. It's beyond their thinking. Because of the problems that are very present. They need help right now. I want the church to pray. I'm not going to seek anybody out. You know who you are. The whole message was tailored to it's time to fight back. And the way you fight is you surrender to God. You give God praise today. So I want us to pray. I want everybody to lift your voice to heaven. And we want God to let liberty and freedom flow in this place. We need some people's minds healed. We need some hearts to be mended first. We need some weights to be lifted off some people. Lord, we come to you strategically right now asking you. Lord, you know every need that's in this place. You know whatever the distraction is that I feel in the spirit right now. I speak to it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, minister to their needs right now. Lord, be it financial, physical, or spiritual. In the name of Jesus. 
Let your power be a very present help right now in Jesus' name. If you're hungry for it, God will bring healing. If you're thirsty for it, God will fill you right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, reach to heaven and give God praise. Somebody give God praise right now. Let your voice rise. Let your voice rise. Come on, that's it. Jesus name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hold the music for a minute. I don't know what it is that we're pushing against because I know that there was things that... I, I, I know what I felt last night. I know what I feel here today. But I feel resistance in this place. Do you feel that? I'm not, I'm not trying to be spooky. But these people should already be speaking in tongues. With the atmosphere that we got. What we do is go back into the same pattern of how we, we, we miss it. It's creating the atmosphere. It's, it's the will of God that these people receive the Holy Ghost. Did they receive it yet? Did you guys, they haven't received it yet. I, I refuse to, I come to fight for their, their future. Do you have understanding of that, that repentance? You received the Holy Ghost and you, you have understanding of all that. I feel we need to pray for just, just pray not that you receive the Holy Ghost, but that God will bring healing to you. There's some things that will cause you. If somebody doesn't receive the Holy Ghost, there's issues usually. That there's distractions. Don't mean you're a bad person. Just you can't get your mind off of self. Where's the gentleman? You were speaking in tongues, but you would stop talking when you started speaking in tongues. You would say, I love you, Jesus. Then you'd go, I love you, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Earlier today. So the Holy Ghost is already on both of you. It's just getting complete healing, I feel, is what we need. We need healing in you right now. So I want to pray. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you anything. I just want you to open yourself up and allow God to minister to you. All right? I'm going to pray for you. I want everybody to pray right now. You don't need to watch. We just need prayer right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody lift your praise right now. I feel healing in this house. In Jesus' name. Yes, that's it. God, 
I come to fight for her future. In the name of Jesus, somebody give me praise. Somebody give me praise. Hallelujah. Jesus. See, the thing you don't understand whenever you have an atmosphere like that, there's revelation. There's a transparency that happens whether people want it or not. And there's revelation that reveals the, the intent of whatever's attacking your mind. So it causes distraction in this place. This is good. This is a good place to be. It's dimensional. But you got to get your fight. I'm fighting for what we felt yesterday. He's not a respecter of persons or places or time. I'm fighting for the atmosphere that we had yesterday right now. I wonder if I got some prayer warriors that will tap in right now. I want my drummer to come out right now. And I want him to come up here and praise. There was something that transformed in his life yesterday. I just want you to praise God. You don't have to just give God praise. Hallelujah. God changed his life yesterday. He's not the same. He cut that up. There's a confidence in him. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. He caught up. Speak it. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Yes. I feel my help coming. I feel my help coming. I feel it coming from the Lord. I feel that atmosphere being stirred up. Come on, somebody. It's time to fight. You got that Abosiki at that on. It's not going to be free. You got to fight for it. Oh, you feel that? You feel that shift? You feel that? He caught up Osiki at Tadarabosa. You know what that is? That's somebody fighting. That's victory because somebody's fighting. Oh, I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got a praise.
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, there's another wave coming right now. There's another wave coming. Even when you don't feel like it, I've come to fight, God. Even when I feel distraction coming, Lord, I want you to know that I lift you high. I praise you, Lord. Reveal yourself, Lord. Reveal your power. Let there be demonstration right now. Let there be deliverance in this house. Show us your glory, God. Healing flow right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Come on, there's been sacrifice. If you're sick in body, lift your hands right now. And just give God praise just for a few moments. I speak to every infirmity in Jesus' name. Lord, only you can do it by your power and your blood. Let healing flow right now in these bodies. Let there be a testimony, a demonstration right now. Come on, fight for your health. Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Anybody hungry for more? Just one more moment. I've come to fight. We're going to fight for something or we're going to fall for anything. Years ago when I was in the Navy, out in the middle of the ocean, we were in a serious situation. They would call general quarters, general quarters. All hands, man your battle stations. That's when each and every one of us had a specific spot we had to go to to be prepared for battle. I don't know, in a multitude of these people, there are places that God is calling each and every one of us. If we're going to fulfill what God has ordained to happen in the city, in this tri-county area, we're going to have to be alert. We're going to have to be awake. We're going to have to understand there is a place, there is a battle taking place, and God needs each and every one of us to man that place. When we did that, we were fulfilled in what God had said. Even in the Navy, we were fulfilled in what was set before us. I believe that for the kingdom. I believe that for each and every one today. Thank you, Brother Beardsley. Thank you for challenging us to realize that we are but in a fight. That we need to be strong in the Lord. From him cometh my help. For I look toward him. And when I do that, I can receive, I can renew my strength and to complete the battle that is set before him. Amen. This Wednesday night, I'm not, we'll be having Bible study. Next Saturday night, 6 o'clock here, we will have a children's revival. Brother Borlick, Sister Borlick will be here. Looking forward to it. If you have or know of some young people that would be able and could be ministered, well, they all could be ministered to if we will but make the difference and allow ourselves to be available to that. I'm looking forward to our young people growing and maturing and receiving of what God would have for them. They're not too young. I remember as a young boy, God dealing with me. I couldn't understand it. I didn't have insight and revelation. But God ministered, and he, he was dealing with me as a young child. I believe we have some young folks that can and shall receive the Holy Ghost even this week. Amen. I love you. God go with you. We'll see you Wednesday.